Hello, Lazio all over the world. Welcome to another episode of Lazio Lounge. I'm Vittorio Campanile, and we're going to talk about, obviously, Lazio Bologna, the first match of the season, and what a match, Alison McKenzie. It has been a very dramatic match for Lazio, but at the end, three very important points. Absolutely. I think that's what you want at the start of the season, obviously, to win a game. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's going to be quite difficult for us reviewing this match to take an awful lot away from it because the circumstances around it, clearly being down to 10 men for so long and the way the game ebbed and flowed, I don't think we're really any closer now to knowing what Sarri's team is going to look like this season than we were at the start of it. But it was great fun. Great atmosphere. Uh, I was amazed by the size of the crowd, considering it was the day before Ferragosto. And some, yeah, some really positive stuff and some not so positive stuff. Yeah, before we go and talk about the match, uh, we are also on my Italian channel. So, Alizer, I know your Italian is great. Do you want to say hello to our Italian listeners as well? Do I want to say hello to them? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Italian listeners, and I hope you can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, subtitle will generate automatically so you can read it in English and understand what we're saying. Obviously, we say hello to all our listeners all around the world. Uh, it's good to have you back. Remember to rate and review the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Spreaker. This helps us increase our reach and uh, get to new Lazio fans, new Lazio supporters. Alizer, talking about the match of yesterday, this could really go very wrong. Down 10 men just after five minutes, penalty after 35. I mean, I could see Bologna winning 4 0 and Lazio finishing with maybe three red cards or something like that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I think we should probably address the elephant in the room, which is Maximiano's debut. I mean, uh, I don't think I've ever seen any debut go as badly as that did. He didn't really have a chance to do anything before being sent off. Um, I think it was after five or six minutes it happens. And that apparently is the record red card for a Serie A player in, in the last 28 years. Nobody has been sent off that quickly in their debut. So uh, it's one thing being sent off that quickly. It's another thing it happening to a goalkeeper and especially for a pretty avoidable and stupid reason, which is handling the ball outside the box. Um, I was quite late getting my ticket for this game, so I was actually sitting in the Curva Sud, which was the complete opposite side of the stadium from where this happened. So I had absolutely no idea what was going on while all this was happening. Like the one minute I'd seen the goalkeeper just collect the ball normally, the next minute there was VAR and a red card and I was very confused. So um <laughs> it was it was a very strange moment but um Providel came on and I have to say impressed and it's it's going to be a fight from here isn't it yeah yeah Sarri said it in the press conference on Saturday that he's going to rotate the, the two goalkeepers both of them will have chance so I wonder if Maximiliano will have a chance again Sarri said it's a mistake this won't count but you know one thing is saying the other one is prove it especially after with their performance, uh, I, I thought he played great. It's not easy coming in at this point like that. Uh, but overall, I thought he had a great performance. So obviously, he's going to play next Sunday as Maximiano is going to get suspended. But the question is, is, will he come back? Will Maximiano have another chance or will Provedel be the goalkeeper? I mean, uh, we have this question for, for a couple of listeners. So let, let's talk about it. Who do you think? Well. Not next week, because we know it already. But who's going to be the starting goalkeeper for Lazio? Do you know it already? Well, it's really int it's really interesting because the um, the the advantage was was with Maximiliano. He's he's come in earlier. He's been the number one choice throughout preseason. He's played all the preseason friendly games. Provadel has basically only just unpacked his bags when he when he got to the club before this this game against Bologna. So you'd have to say going into the season, it was Maximiano's shirt to lose. But then the fact that he's been sent off within five minutes, uh, if you even set that aside and you take Sarri at face value with what he says about this just being one mistake and it not being uh, something that's going to impact his selection in the future, 
he's he's just given Provadel a free audition because Provadel has come on for him. He's made one terrific save. He looked really assured. He looked good with his feet. He looked like he was organizing the team well. And now Provadel, because of the suspension that's going to come, is going to be able to start the next game as well. So yep. Maximiano has handed Provadel the opportunity to put up his hand as being the first choice goalkeeper. And if he plays again next week against Torino, like he did against Bologna, it's going to be hard for Sari to find a reason to, to, to change him. Um, so I think the advantage is, has, has shifted just because uh, Provadel looks like he's taking advantage of, of the opportunity that he got. Yeah, maybe maybe Maximiliano will play in the Europa League, but this starts in October, if I'm not wrong, right? I think uh, Europa League starts in October, so maybe Provedel will have a, uh, a chance to start in the next coming week. Two things about this. The first one, I don't know if you noticed, but the first save of Provedel, then he went down and uh, complaining he had a muscle injury. And that was terrific because, you know, we already lost the first goalkeeper. If we lose the, the second goalkeeper after five minutes, I mean, the third choice was Adamonis. That would, I mean, that that would have been the greatest record ever, right? Three goalkeeper substitution in 10 minutes. <laughs> so that was really scary. And the second one, was: were you surprised that Basic came off? I thought probably a winger would have been the choice from Sarri said Basic came off that that was surprising for me but at, at the end a good choice um yeah it's quite funny with with Provedel because when when Maximiliano, Maximiliano got sent off there are a couple of guys behind me and they were saying oh no what we're gonna do we've it's gonna oh here comes Adamonis uh the picture of Provedel come up on the screen and they said oh here comes Adamonis you know remember he's this kind of young Lithuanian guy he's hardly played this is a disaster and so on and then they announced that it was Provadel, and they were they're all kind of like, oh, I forgot we signed Provadel. That's good. <laughs> and that kind of tells you a lot that he's so new to this team, and that that's one of the things that impressed me the most because he was getting there were little things happening. You know, he, his passing, I think, his his calmness on the ball was something that was really going to play to his advantage in terms of getting selected by Sari. There's a moment where he picked out Milinkovic Savic under pressure with a really good ball, and Milinkovic, once he got rid of the ball, kind of turned around and applauded him. Same thing happened with Romagnoli at one point. I think everyone was really impressed by that kind of distribution. It's not what they've been used to under Thomas Tricasha in the past. Um, but yeah, really, really assured performance considering how new he is to the team. Um, as for the change, I, I'm not sure I was that surprised because I think down to 10, playing with a 4-4-1 makes more sense to try and kind of replicate the way the Lazio play, you know, because you can still push with the wingers and push the midfielders up, but have a kind of decent defensive structure off the ball. Whereas if, if you were taking a winger off and you were doing, I don't know, say a 4-3-2 or something, the balance is lost a little bit. So I did feel a bit sorry for Basic because I thought in that first five minutes, he'd actually look quite lively and he'd started quite well pushing up an attack. So uh, he's going to get another chance. Interesting, he was selected in the first place, though, ahead of Alberto. I wasn't surprised. I mean, uh, we saw it in the last three... Basically, this was the starting eleven we saw in the last friendly match, except Pedro that was injured. So that didn't surprise me. But, you know, you're talking about the balance. Our midfield was Zaccagni, Felipe Anderson, and Milinko Yusari and Cataldi. I mean, that, that's a very, very, very offensive mind midfield. I don't think we're going to see it very often. So, but, but in the end, it was the right choice. We have to talk about Felipe Anderson and Zaccagni because... As, as you were mentioning about the balance, they defended pretty well. I didn't expect to see Zaccagni coming back and and uh, get the ball back and, and defending so well. That That's really encouraging because, you know, the wingers like to attack. They're, they're happy to run when they're attacking. But coming back, tracking back when you're defending, that that's not very typical movement wingers love to do. Instead, they did it. So that was really encouraging. Yeah, it's, and it was it was it's not an easy thing to ask of a team because the whole preseason, especially with all these new players coming in, there's been a bit of a revolution of the squad really this summer in terms of the, the numbers of players coming in. They've been practicing this entire summer to play in a certain way, yeah. and to have to change that style after five minutes 
is um, is difficult. And it, it was particularly difficult against the Bologna team that were packing that midfield with, with five players and have some really good technical players, you know, between Shaitan, uh, Soriano, Sansoni. These guys, they know how to pass the ball around well. They know how to keep hold of the ball well. And Lazio were really on the back foot in terms of possession. What I did like was that they were restricting Bologna to not really having an awful lot of chances. You know, yeah. down, to, down, down a man for that long, and the only goal conceded was a penalty, a pretty stupid penalty. And beyond that, Providell made one really good save, and, and that was about it. So I think defensively, considering the defence is new, um, well, okay, yesterday it was only Romagnoli who was new, but um, I, I think there was some something encouraging about that too. Yeah, I thought our defence was great, honestly. I thought it was really positive. Didn't expect it because you change the goalkeeper, you know, you can shift a little bit the balance. But overall, our defence was good. I thought Providel did a good save in the second half. And it was good to see Lazzari finishing there. Saving on Arnaldo, which I thought that has the rebounds. So I thought that was a really positive sign for our defence. And, uh, you know, comparing what happened last year to this year, that was a big, big improvement. You mentioned Luis Alberto, Alistair. Uh, it was really encouraging to see Luis Alberto... Being a second, a little bit like a second manager, when Maximiano came off, he was there cheering up a little bit. Uh, during the beginning of the second half, he was there a little bit telling the guys what movement, where to send the ball, etc. It doesn't look like a guy who wants to leave, right? It didn't give me that impression, at least. No, and he was he was singled out for praise by Sari after the game because. Um, I thought it was a pretty bold move bringing him on for Cataldi because you were you already mentioned how attacking that midfield was and then you you take off the only kind of slightly more defensive uh, midfielder in that bunch and put on Alberto and to kind of play in front of the defense really and and he did well and Sari Sari praised him for that I yeah I, I think that you know Tari's now said before this game Alberto's staying he's going to be a Lazio player this season. I think Alberto is such a particular kind of character that in a way I'm not not that worried about this affecting him mentally or anything because really in the grand scheme of things, what's happened this summer hasn't been any different to what's happened in previous transfer windows in previous summers. There's been talk of him returning to Spain. There's been, yep. okay, maybe, maybe his mum's not been getting involved every time. <laughs> this is new, but, yeah. <laughs> It's transfer rumours about Alberto going back to Seville are hardly a new thing. So um, I do expect that will probably happen at some point, but I'm, I'm not too concerned that it's going to kind of change his attitude um, for the rest of the season or anything. Um, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, you made me an, an assist talking about Iglitari's quote because we've been asked by Diane if the transfer market is over for Lazio. Uh, Sari said in the press conference, well, I would love to have a left back who is a left footed, but we played last year with a right footed playing on the left back. I think we can do it even this year. Probably if no one goes out, no one will come in. Now, there have been rumors of Acerbi going on loan to Inter. I don't think that will be enough to sign a new player. I think if Isai leaves, then Lazio will sign another left back i think this is the this is what's going to happen otherwise we'll stay like that do you agree Alistair? and what's your thought is that yesterday played and i thought he played quite well considering his past performance yeah i mean i think the idea that you know if if more signings come it'll be one in one out uh or one out one in i guess and that that uh that pattern and that's probably about right. I think we would we would like to have a left footed left back available. Um, we would like to have a Vice Mobile available. Um, I thought it was interesting that after a preseason full of Cancellieri being considered Vice Mobile, he then came on yesterday on the right wing and actually looked really good. Because remember, folks, that is the position he, he actually is used to playing in. Um, so yeah, obviously those are two things that we would ideally like to have. Um, if not now, then 
I wonder if in January it's something they can look at. But look, they, they've already talked about quite a lot how, you know, they're already patting themselves on the back about this transfer market, Ilitari and, and and the club saying, oh, we've, we've transformed this squad. We've brought in all these players since Sadi arrived. We've invested. We've brought down the average age. And all of that's true. But I think when it gets to the point that they're kind of congratulating themselves for doing it, it's maybe a sign that that's the end yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's too much. I don't like them. Congratulations for for this market. It has been positive, has been good, but not that much. You mentioned Cancellieri, but before talking about him, we have to talk about Manuel Lazzari. What a match he had. He was terrific. And, you know, we are starting at... Uh, fantasy football and i'm happy we don't we did not this week because i would have been so upset because lazari made pretty much everything he doesn't get the three points for the goal he doesn't get the point for the assist but the first goal of Lazzari is all credit to manuel lazari i thought another great performance and he should be calling the national team well he can't be because he can't play in the back four remember I, so, I thought Lazio was playing um, in that position, but okay. <laughs> so he, he can't play in a back four, so he's not good enough to play for a team that can't beat North Macedonia. So yeah, sorry, Scottish too soon, jokes. Too soon. Scottish <laughs> jokes. I'll call this. <laughs> anyway, great match. Making myself I mean, popular with your Italian listeners here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, great match from Lazzari. Uh, even Maruzic played well yesterday. I have to, I have to say, um, but Lazzari was was unbelievable. A little bit disappointed from Felipe Anderson. He defended well, as we mentioned, but I, I thought he lack of personality. Uh, Lazzari was attacking, so he was often one against one. And if you have the talent and the speed of Felipe Anderson, you should go for it every single time. And try and dribble past your 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 defender because if you do that with Lazari there taking the other one, then you know, you're every time you're in front of the goalkeeper and he didn't do it. I'm a little bit disappointed. Yeah, I think well, going back to Lazari, I mean obviously I'm I'm taking the piss a bit on out of what people have said about him and the Italy team in the past, but he he was exactly what you need really when you go down to ten men. Someone who's got that energy, um, that pace, to to kind of continue pushing despite having to do more work. I mean, his engine is ridiculous, and the, it wasn't just the amount of running he was doing, but it was the speed at which he was doing all of it. His changes of direction, his bursts of pace, and he just didn't stop. And I think that that really, it wasn't just his own performance, but I think it was the way that he kind of set the tone for the rest of the team. He almost set standards of, right, this is how hard we're going to have to work now because we, we are a man down, but, that's, but we can continue pushing, we can continue playing the way we want to play. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's, your fancy football point is a good one because at the end of the day, he's not going to get any... Uh, numbers on his uh, on his page in terms of assists or goals even though he set up the first one but yeah he, he was fantastic hopefully a sign of of things to come um and and he can have a massive season i tweeted that this investor would have scored and you know that's what happened <laughs> i didn't mention in which goal he would have scored so you know no one can say i was wrong yeah so Talking about goal and assist, um, Rinko Savic didn't play well. He's struggling, and I think this is due to his physicality. We know that players that strong, that big, takes a little bit more time to get in shape. But even though he he was struggling, his assist to Chiro for the second goal, that's still magic. Even when he's not playing that well, he can still make things happen that's that's very encouraging yeah i mean I, I didn't think he he played badly to be honest i thought uh, i thought he did okay i thought um he had some really nice moments of, of kind of little skills little turns and passes and so on but uh yeah i think difficult it was if it, it was difficult in that midfield essentially for the central midfield they're not used to playing in the kind of two-man midfield system 
and they were outnumbered. And it was obvious looking at down at the pitch from, you know, Stadio Olimpico, obviously you're always miles away from the pitch, but what it does mean is you get quite a good overview of kind of tactically what's going on because you can see everything almost from a bird's eye view. And it was pretty obvious how much space Bologna were, were going to get in that those central areas in midfield. So I, I think that probably stopped him from having the game he, he, he would have liked to have. Um, but yeah, like you say, there's still the quality there. There's, there's no signs of him sulking, obviously, or, or anything like that. Um, you know, the transfer stuff, rumours and so on, will we'll continue 100% sure about that between now and the end of the window. But um, I don't expect that to, to affect him at all. Um, but it, I thought as well, another player probably worth mentioning is Matthias Vecino, because I thought even him coming off the bench I mean, we're not talking about much, but, you know, he did make an impact, like Cancellieri. Yeah. And I think perhaps perhaps we kind of overanalyze new players, but it did look quite useful having someone with his physicality who can win the ball back, who can kind of, you know, get himself in the right places positionally. And, and I thought he looked very useful. You know, you know what? At the beginning of the second half, I was hoping to see Marcos Antonio coming in because he's a quite speedy midfielder who moves the ball fast. So I thought that would have helped the team more than Cataldi, who wasn't really happy when he came off. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, but talking about Vecino, well, I think that's why we sign him. Experienced player, know how to manage those type of situation. Um, we said he's a sort of jolly. He can do various positions. And I thought he came in and played really well. Solid performance. And it wasn't easy because when he came in, Luis Alberto was playing in Cataldi's position. And, uh, you know, Luis Alberto is very talented, but not a great defensive mid midfielder. So it wasn't easy for Vecino to come in and uh, play that role. Uh, so, again, I thought Luis Alberto and Vecino together played an incredible... Uh, they played incredibly well in... I don't know if we're ever going to see that situation again. I mean, at that point, we had a midfielder who was Zaccagni. Cancellieri, Luis Alberto, and Vecino. I mean, what type of midfield is that? I mean, but yeah, I mean, he's a very experienced guy, and I think that's one of the reasons why we sign him. Uh, I mean, imagine coming in Aqua at that point instead of Vecino. Maybe we would have a faster midfielder, but how many balls would Aqua lose? Uh, how many times would he be out of position? How, how often does he make? the wrong decision so you know that's why we need a, a player a player like this you know coming in in that situation yeah well i mean as well as uh as well as all the kind of new players i think it's worth mentioning the obvious existing player which is chiro because once again he scored on the opening day um he led by example i thought i mean he's now I tweeted about this earlier. He's, he's now overtaken Batistuta in the all-time Serie A top scorer list. He's five away from breaking the top ten. I mean, he's going to get there, isn't he? <laughs> but I mean, I don't think we need to worry about him again this season. It's it's incredible, and we should never take for granted what it's like to have a player that reliable. I think it was something, uh, not Chiro so much, but the lack of goals in pre-season was certainly something yeah. we got a little bit concerned about. Um, so to be able to to find two with ten men was good, especially because I don't think that's really created that much in this game. Um, but still came away with two goals, managed to turn the game over. Something I wanted to ask you about was because it was mentioned by a couple of players, by Chiro and um, by Sari actually, the idea of the the character. I'm very impressed we've managed to make it 24 minutes through this podcast without talking about character. But um, coming from behind, you know, fighting against adversity, losing a player after five minutes, all this kind of stuff. And both of them suggested that this is something kind of new. This is something that last year of the past perhaps wouldn't have been able to do, but, but it shows that they've changed. What do you think about that idea? Well, I said it at the beginning, right? Uh, probably in the past, Lazio would have lost this match for Neil and we would have three red cards. So that's the big, biggest difference. Uh, you know, you think it's, un it's unfair, the red card, the penalty, and 
all the referees whistle etc so you can get very angry and uh, get a red card but we saw definitely improvement there chiro said it as well chiro said uh, last year we'd have, we'd, we would have allowed the second goal straight after the first one instead this time we fought we fought till the end uh, new mentality probably it, it's funny because yeah we changed some players but not that many right so i don't know where it comes from maybe confidence uh, maybe Romagnoli to help that a little bit, but yeah, it was completely different, and that that was really impressive because how often did we see Lazio collapsing after a red card, after a penalty, etc. So that was really encouraging, and it was a good sign. Um, talking about the ref, Alistair, I thought the red card was the right call. The penalty was the right call. I thought in the second half he lost a little bit of control. I mean, Medel pushed three times Patrick on the same corner, and the ref didn't do nothing. But Lazio managed it well, and yeah, I don't honestly in the first half I thought the ref probably uh, Sumaro should have should have been sent off earlier. But apart from that, the referee didn't make any bad choices. I mean, Sumaro was so reckless <laughs> in, that, in that game. And I was, I was kind of wondering, how, what the hell does he think he's doing? He's just going to yeah. get himself sent off here. But then um, he probably thought, well, with this referee, anything goes. So I can just get stuck in and do what I like. But, I mean, he was really the the, the biggest assist for Lazio yesterday was, was that because it was so unnecessary Definitely. as well. It's not like he was preventing a goal with the last man tackle or anything like that. I mean, it was it was just needless. Um, so, yeah, I have to thank him for that, I guess. I think, um, yeah, it's, I, I, I don't think I've heard of it. I had to look up who the referee was. I don't know if he's one of the, the new, the new yeah. kind of, um, wave of referees who are trying to give more experience and so on. So maybe we're going to have to expect a bit of this. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think we need to dwell on it too much. I think another, so talking about positive change, another thing, obviously, final home game of last season, there was a massive crowd for Verona. But in general, Vittorio, last season, it, sometimes it felt like it was just the two of us at the stadium. And there were 40,000 there yesterday. But to put that in context, the day before Ferragosto, massive national holiday in Italy. Um, you know, I went out earlier to try and get my morning cappuccino and I couldn't because there's nothing open today. There's nobody in Rome. Even Vittorio's not here. Vittorio's and, always here. And I'm doing the podcast, you know. Today it's national holiday, the birthday of my wife, and I'm here doing the podcast with you. I mean, if That's, I don't get divorced today, it's unbelievable. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, but yeah, but I think that I think and I hope that that's a really positive sign for the season ahead. Obviously, the abonamenti makes a massive difference. We've, we've spoken about yeah. that before, but there was a lot beyond the, the people who've bought the abonamenti there. And I really hope that they can continue this kind of wave of enthusiasm um, to, to get crowds in throughout the season. Yeah, they, they are reopening tomorrow, I think, on Tuesday. So if you're thinking about do the season ticket for Lazio, you can, from tomorrow, do it again. So, if you're interested, there's a chance they're going to do the season tickets even for the Europa League group stage. So, that's going to be something really interesting because let's not forget that, unfortunately, Alistair, it affected especially the Europa League matches. Uh, I think Dynamo, Dynamo Locomotive played last year and it was pretty much only my family at the match. And, and that was the first match of Europa League. And, and the most important against Galatasaray, uh, the stadium was pretty much empty again. So uh, that would be a huge boost for the Europe League. So let's hope that we're going to do it even for Europe. Um, as the, before we wrap it up, um, I thought Lazio needed to bring in a, a winger. And I was thinking about Luca Romero, who played very well in the in the preseason. He said Cancellieri came in, who was played only as Vigen Mobile all, all summer. He came in in his position, right back, Right, we got right back. Uh, winger, and uh, yeah, he didn't play that much, but he, he was really impressive. The character, how he played, his talent, because he dribbled past at least three, four times his, his marker. That was really impressive. That was really encouraging for the future. Do, do you think he's going to play in that position more, more often than we 
Mission Mobile. Uh, yeah, probably just because of the fact that Immobile is going to be playing all the time and going to be wanting to play all the time. And opportunities have always been limited for players to who have previously been in, in, in putting pressure in that striker position. Um, whereas I think they, they can rotate that those wingers a lot, you know, in terms of starting selection, but also in terms of during matches. Obviously, Pedro's injured at the moment. I mean, he is getting on an age, so I think we we have to expect that he's not going to be able to play, you know, twice, three times a week throughout the season as well. Um, so, yeah, I think probably Sarri thought he was the right man for that moment rather than anything about Romero not going to not getting chances this season. I think between the, the kind of five of them, they'll probably, it's just a good options because they all kind of do different things as well. They're, they're all kind of different, different types of players who can bring different things at certain moments in the game. And I think that's that's a really useful diversity of option for Sally to have. Yeah, I was really encouraging by his performance. I thought he really played well, so that was good. Uh, Alistair, if you have nothing else to add, I think we can wrap it up here. Do you have maybe a stat? I know you love stats. Uh, there was one about Chiro. Oh, which was that he's only the fourth player <laughs> only the fourth player to score in five consecutive opening days of the Serie A season so wow. there you go I mean we, we need to like, write a book about the Chiro scoring stat yeah. because it would be a yeah. big book it's impressive and let's not forget that Gazzetta of Sport made a title the summer of gold and then they put Chiro Mobile. I mean how embarrassing is that how embarrassing is that we we are happy to have Chiro on our side, right? Always, always. Thanks again, Azar, for joining us, for joining me. Thanks everybody for listening to our podcast. I'll be back next Monday after Torino Lazio, is it? I don't remember now by heart. Yeah. Tough match, tough match. Torino is a good team, and Juric is a great manager. So we're gonna be back next week, and you can find us wherever you listen to our podcast. Thanks and rate and review the podcast. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.